Hello, everyone. My name is Ole Kagan, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator with LA County Library, and I welcome you to Work Ready Overview of Productivity Software. That done, I'd like to tell you about the Work Ready program. And it's a program that exists to help job seekers in LA County get a job or improve your current work situation. And the library is doing that in three ways. Number one, we're presenting events like this on work-related topics. So we've done resumes and cover letters. We focus on specific careers. We've done many different work-ready topics, and you can find those, the past events, on our Work Ready, or should I say our Work and Career YouTube channel. I'm going to post a link to that playlist of previous events and short videos in the chat right now. And I'll also put that in the follow-up email that I'll send after this event. And just so you know, this presentation is being recorded. So if you miss anything that I'm talking about, don't worry. I'm going to edit the video afterward and send you a link to it, hopefully either by the end of this week or at the very early next week. So worry not. And we'll be talking about a lot of apps here. So I'm also going to send you links to all of the apps that, that I talk about so you can access them later without having to scramble and remember in your mind exactly which app I talked about. So the second way that WorkReady is helping job seekers in LA County is by lending out laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots, so computers and internet access out of 20 library locations. And you can find those by going to lacountylibrary.org and searching our catalog for WorkReady Kit, and you can see where the laptops are available and where you can check them out. You can get those for six weeks at a time. The third way that Work Ready is helping our job seekers here is by purchasing the latest and greatest work related books. So, we're talking about books on the basics, as I mentioned, interviewing, cover letters, resumes, also on productivity software, and many other work related topics. So, now before we move in to the event. I also want to share with you our next Work Ready event. And starting in March, they're going to be weekly every Tuesday at 11 o'clock, this same time slot. And the first one in March is going to be, appropriately enough, Work Ready Returning to Work. I know, and we all know, that many people are returning to work after, after employment gaps which means that maybe you were without a job for a while for there's so many reasons out there. Maybe you were taking care of a family member. Maybe you were just looking for a job. Maybe you were in school. There's so many reasons for somebody to have an employment gap. And our next program on Tuesday, March 7th at 11 a.m. is going to be covering how to talk about that employment gap how to get over that thing, which makes so many people slightly uncomfortable when applying for jobs and going to interviews. Here is a link to that. We're going to be joined by a career coach, Jennifer Rizzotti, and also joining us that day will be career coach Liz Moeller, a stalwart of previous Work Ready programs, including some of our most popular ones. So it's going to be a really good event, Work Ready Returning to Work, once again, March 7th at 11 a.m. and free, just like all programs that we offer in person and virtually. And if you're interested in learning more about the programs that the library offers, you can go to the website, lacountylibrary.org. And on the top right hand side, if you hover over the little events box, click on virtual program, you can see all of the events we're presenting on Zoom for all ages on different topics. And if you click on that events link, then you are going to see events in person and virtual out of all 85 library locations. There's quite, quite a few uh, different topics for all ages, all absolutely free and available to you. All right. I think it's getting to the end of that time to get on with the show. Our program today is Overview of Productivity Software. And your presenter is me, Ole Kagan, Community Engagement Coordinator for LA County Library, and also avowed 
wonk of productivity software. I really enjoy productivity software and thinking about it and trying new software. And I'd like to share some of that enthusiasm with you and show you what's out there because there really is so, so much. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my presentation and then we're going to get in to today's program. All right. Okay, here is this. Bring up the presentation. Bring up my presenter view. And we are all set to go. So as you know, today we're going to take a dip into the world of productivity software. You might be here for a variety of reasons. And actually, I'm really curious to know why you're here. Do you have a particular type of productivity software or a particular app that you absolutely love and can't live without? For me, it's Microsoft Notepad, but we'll get to that. Can you let me know in the chat which apps are you interested? What types of app are you interested? How much experience you have? Just share with me who you are and why you're here. I'm going to give you a second to write in. So the way that the chat works in these programs is that we have that I can see your chat responses, but other people can't. So if you're concerned about privacy, don't worry. Other people aren't going to be able to see your responses. And I'm going to read them out loud, but I'm not going to say people's names unless unless you want me to. So I have one response to learn about new products, to, to enhance my skills, learn more about Excel. We're going to be covering Excel, although we're going to be covering a lot of software. So we're going to just cover Excel a little bit. Excel is one of my favorites. I'm actually I'm actually a huge spreadsheet person. Let's see. Some to help with attention to detail, to help with work experience. Would like to go from paper to paperless. Yeah, some of these apps, particularly the ones the project management will help you with that. To learn about Microsoft and OneDrive. So we're not going to cover OneDrive during this program, but we'll cover a lot of the Microsoft apps because Microsoft literally has apps everything at this point. Google Sheets, I'm going to mention Google Sheets. I'm not going to be doing going a deep dive into it. All presentation apps. Yes, we have a whole section on presentation apps. It's it's one of the biggest categories and we're going to have we're going to be doing a lot of those. Oh, I like this response. My I can't live without program is Evernote. Yes, I've used Evernote and will, I, I do have Evernote in the presentation. There's no taking apps, particularly Evernote. One of the most popular ones is really great. There's somebody who, crea who cre you creates a piece of software and like to know how other programs compare. Okay, yes, I see. There's somebody who Microsoft Viva for reminders. I actually haven't heard of Microsoft Viva. I know that Microsoft has it to do. If somebody's curious project management software. There's a lot of project man management software. Thank you for all these responses. Oh, see, someone says Viva is awesome. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into that because there's so many apps out there. I'm always learning about new ones and it, it makes my life exciting. I like to I like to get in there and try them. Uh, somebody asks, would you record this class and send it to us because I'm driving and I'm not going to be able to take notes. I have you covered. Don't worry. This is being recorded and I'm going to edit the video afterward and send you a link either by the end of next week or the early or end of this week, early next week. So don't worry. You'll be able to definitely see this presentation in the future. And I'll also make a list of the links because there's quite a bit of apps that I'm going to mention. Okay. So. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. And if you have questions during the presentation, put them in the Q&A. I'm not going to be able to stop during the middle of the presentation because we're just going to be covering so much. But I will stick around at the end and try to take all of your questions. So we're probably we're going to be going for about an hour in the presentation. And then afterward, I'll, I'll get into the questions. So realize oh, there's a lot of reasons why people are here. So you might be just interested in seeing what's out there. 
you might already be working and looking for something that will be useful or maybe even life-changing for you. Or you're just curious. You want to learn looking for something new, a new tool to play with. That's I fit all those categories. I'm always looking for something to help me in, at, in my work and also just something new to get into and play with. So all in all, I keep mentioning there's going to be a lot of apps in this presentation. I counted yesterday when I was going through a draft of this presentation that is literally 35. It's right around 35 apps that I mention during this presentation. Not all of them am I going to talk about or show you, but they're in the slides and I'll show you quite a few of them. Um, so there's going to be uh, those apps. There's 35 apps. Uh, don't worry, it's not going to be as crazy as me just going down a list of 35. I have them in categories. I'm also going to show you them in different ways. This presentation is multimodal, so I'm going to be talking about some of them. I'll be showing you videos about some of them, and then I'll be demonstrating a few things by sharing my screen with you and going through some apps. Really, 35 apps. That's just scratching the surface. So stick with me. We're going to hopefully learn some new and interesting stuff by the end of this presentation. So let's get into the description of today's program. And while you read this description, I'm just going to say that I need to give you a little bit of disclaimer. I have not used all of the apps in this presentation. If only I had time in my life to try out all of these apps. I have used a few of them quite extensively and a few of them I've tried out over the years. So the purpose isn't for me to give you an in-depth demonstration of every one of the apps, but just give you an overview of what's out there. I really don't think it's possible for any one person to be an expert at all of these apps since even though they exist and they exist for good reasons, how can one person be using all of these apps so intently um, and actually be getting any work done? I don't think it's possible. But anyhow, we're talking about productivity software. What is productivity software? It's software we use in our personal and professional lives to assist us in communicating, planning, and just plain old getting work done. And that means a lot of different things. Certain industries have specific software just for them. While the stuff I'm gonna be the software I'm gonna be talking about today is really more general, available to most people who are looking for jobs. So most offices, for instance, will use the Microsoft Office Suite or Google Docs or Zoho or any of the kind of this, those kind, that kind of software, similar to project management and to-do and presentation software. All of that is used generally throughout the work world. So I'm going to be talking about all of these things. And what I really want you to get out of this presentation is I want you to understand the different categories that exist of productivity software to have a little bit of structure in your mind. I want you to be able to recall the name of a few of the apps that I mentioned that maybe you weren't aware of before. So most people know about Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Google Docs, but there's some of the apps here that maybe you don't know. And I hope that you are able to recall them after the presentation and maybe tell other people about them, your newfound knowledge. And I think most importantly for me, I want you to be excited about trying something new, an app that you hadn't heard of before that has a free version and you go in there and maybe you're a little nervous in the beginning, but you go in there and you try it out and you find that it's really good for you. That would be the win condition for me after this presentation, that you try something new and you love it. And before I go on as a teaser, everybody's talking about AI these days. Well, I found an app like Microsoft PowerPoint that uses AI to create slideshows for you. It's, it's interesting, and I'm going to be doing a demo of it when we get to that section later.
So stick around at least for that. All right, so here's our schedule for the day. We've already defined productivity software. The definition is relatively simple. We're going to be going from text editor to word processor, spreadsheet to database. We're going to explode the idea of presentation software. And then we're going to go from personal organization to project management. And then I'll give you just a few other apps to, that you might be interested in trying out and tell you what they do and why you might want to use them. So let's get right into this. Now, let's start by from the simplest to perhaps the most used productivity software out there, text editor to word processor that everyone knows about Microsoft Word. It has been the most popular word processor out there for decades after beating WordPerfect and WordStar in the 80s and 90s. It's currently the standard for composing documents in the workplace. But really, I want, what I want to start with is the most simple. And that is Microsoft Notepad. This is Microsoft Notepad. And it's, I've got to say, it's probably my favorite productivity app. It's the one that I use every single day at work. Microsoft Notepad is really just this. It's a literal notepad. It's plain text, so you can't, there's no bold, no italics, simply text and lines. What you see here is what it does. And you can even remove, though it's, it's, it's so minimalist, you can pretty much just change, you can change the font by going to format, font, and you got different options for different fonts, change the size of the font. So if you want it to be a little bigger, so if I want it to be, I'm using IBM Plex Mono as my font because I, I enjoy it, but I can make it bigger if I want to. So if I make, want to make it 26, so it's easier to see, I can make it 26. So I, I think I like to keep it at like 12, or 11 for me, because I'm mostly looking at my screen here. Let's do 11. You can also, oh, this is a little bigger than I usually have. I guess I usually have it at 10. So I use it so much, I even know I, if it's a little bit different than what my usual driver is, then I usually know. So here's, here it is. You can even get rid of the status bar at the bottom here. So the way I usually have it is actually just like this. So that if I take meeting notes with it, I can, remove formatting from text. So this is a little shortcut. Sometimes if you copy information off the internet, sometimes the line breaks are weird. The formatting is odd. If you need to copy it into Microsoft Word or, or into an email, sometimes what you can do is you can take, copy that information, put it into Notepad and it'll remove all that formatting because it can't take it. It's just, they're just TXT files. They're just the most basic kind of text files. It'll remove all that formatting and then you can copy it again and paste it wherever without, without all that formatting. So this is Notepad. There are also slightly more complicated alternatives to Notepad. And I want to just show you Notepad++ very quickly. Um, and Notepad++ simply takes what you see here with Notepad and adds some features that are useful for primarily computer programming, to be honest with you. Uh, the other, you know, for, for the most basic notes that you've got this here, if you want it to be a little bit more complex, let me go ahead and, sh and just show you Notepad++. So this is Notepad++. I don't know if it's coming. Yeah, here it is. So as you can see, the, the basic, the middle part is really the same. It, it does pretty much plain text, no images, no bold, no nothing. But you see all this up here, all these features. So you can put plugins, various kind of plugins in there. Uh, you can record macros, which is you're recording certain actions that you can do over and over again. That's already makes it much more complicated. You can change the way it looks, but probably the most interesting thing for, for it is if, if you write any kind of code, it will actually highlight the code and that makes it makes a life a lot easier when you're trying to read computer code 
So as you can see, I made a extremely basic HTML page, which is uh, HTML's hypertext markup language. So as you can see, when I selected HTML from languages, it highlighted HTML. It's highlighted the tags for me. So if you have code, you know, long code, it'll highlight and it'll make it easier to read. So it's got a, a few other features, but that's kind of the very, the basics of text editor. There are also some really complicated text editors that I would say, you know, it's not, not necessarily not for the faint of heart. Um, so let me get back to our slideshow here. Not for the faint of heart. Ooh, do I have the, I see my, my presenter view handy. Oh yeah. I need to switch over to my presenter view. There it goes. So here, so there's also some way more complicated text headers primarily used by computer nerds who write code and interesting to people like me and those are like, those are text editors like Emacs and Vim so if you if notepad is the most simplest and notepad plus plus is a little bit more complicated Emacs and Vim is like notepad plus 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 you really just use computer shortcuts as you don't even really use the mouse on those um, but they can do a lot of stuff since so if you're interested in a text editor that can that can probably walk your dog. Uh, Emacs and Vim are ones that you might try. You really, people take months to really learn them, but from those who do, they say it's very worthwhile. And then of course, you've got the word processor for the rest of us. People who actually like to have a wissy wig or what you see is what you get format. You've got Microsoft Word, which has, been the standard, as I've mentioned before, in word processors for a long time. You know, what is a word processor? A text editor and a word processor are created for the very basic act of creating documents. Whether you want to write a letter, a memo, you want to create a menu for a restaurant, well, that's publishing software. It's more, more useful for that. But Word can do it. Word can, has advanced features like mail merge. So if you want to send the same letter to a whole bunch of people, you can create a database with all of their names, email address, addresses, and then Word will automatically generate all those letters for you with different people's names and different people's addresses. You can uh, track editing. So if you're working on documents with multiple people, you can actually see the edits they've made and they can put comments there. Um, you can record macros. So again, if you do repetitive actions frequently, you can record those actions and have Microsoft Word do it for you. There's also alternatives to Microsoft Word that are not quite as powerful, but still very good. And those are Google Docs and LibreOffice. And then there are naturally others, of course. What you see here in the image is a very small image of a screenshot of what Microsoft Word looks like. So the middle part of the page I'm going to start drawing on this page because I like uh, the middle part of this page here. This is where you type everything. Um, you've got a little status bar right down here. So you've got a few, some more information, just like on Microsoft Notepad. You can change the way it looks. You can change right here. You can change the zoom so you can zoom in to your page. And up here, you have something that's that's what makes Word so powerful. All these options, you've got the, what they call the ribbon. I mean, there's different tabs in the ribbon right here and right here and right here and right Right here, um, you can click on and get the ribbon switches to different to different options. Um, here you have the. Well, I don't know why I'm doing that. I can show you the ribbon itself, right here. So you've got the basic features here for text. You can make it bold, italics, underline, strike through. You can change the different font, different size. You can change the way your page is aligned, and then here you have different formatting options in terms of different styles. So if you want your presentation to, or your presentation, so your, your document to look different ways, your headings to be a different font, your text to be a different size, you could, there are many preset templates or styles that you can use. It's convenient for somebody who doesn't want to fiddle with the whole document and change everything, or doesn't want to create their own style. Microsoft Word has a bunch of styles for you. And Microsoft has been very good about including those kind of styles and templates into various pieces of software that they create. Interesting, we actually have a presentation uh, of an introduction to Microsoft Office and Google Docs. And we've done that. We've done that a few times before, and it's on our YouTube channel. I'll, I'll post, I'll send a link to that um, in the follow-up email. So if you want to get deep into, or at least a little bit deeper into Microsoft Office and Google Docs, 
and how they compare. We have that available for you. Of course, don't have too much time to do that today. Just wanted to give you a, a brief overview of Microsoft Word. So that's text editor to word processing. Let's move on to spreadsheet to database. So Microsoft Excel is probably the most popular piece of spreadsheet software out there. What is a spreadsheet? Well, when computers stop taking up entire rooms, one of the first things being promoted in the way they were used, you know, there's recipes, for, particularly for personal computers, to keep your recipes, keep them in the computer. The other thing, particularly for business purposes, was spreadsheets, it's rows, columns of numbers that you could manipulate and do mathematical operations with, budgets, all of that exciting stuff. Well, exciting for some people, maybe exciting for me. Uh, Microsoft Excel lets you do that. And over the years, Microsoft has been around for decades now. It has grown more and more powerful until now, where Microsoft Excel, it dominates the field of spreadsheets and for good reason, because Excel is godlike when it comes to spreadsheets. And I'm going to show you just a few of the things that it can do. So here we have the Microsoft Excel window. So I wrote some reasons why Microsoft Excel is good. It's pretty easy to get started with it in just to enter information into the cells and have it do basic mathematical calculations, just do some basic formatting of the cells. It's really simple. It's pretty much just what you have up here. To create charts, also not extremely difficult since chart, since it automatically generates them where you click the type of a chart you want. And if your information is laid out in a sensible way, it'll actually suggest the chart that you should use or the graph that you should use and create some style for it. Um, so it's pretty easy to get started. But the more you get into Excel, the more you realize that it can do uh, an endless amount of things and more every time. For instance, I don't know if you're aware that beyond pie charts, Excel can actually use geographic information that you put in and create heat maps. So what you see here on the slide is a heat map of the checkouts of work ready laptops from our very first session a couple of years ago. You can see we've had we had a lot of checkouts in Lancaster over here in the Antelope Valley and then in this area here, we had the most checkouts and these purple dots, I don't know if you can see them very easily, those are the work ready libraries. So those, these are the libraries work ready is checked out. So I like to create these kind of things so I can get a visual sense of where the laptops get checked out. And sometimes I'll take the information for the people who attend the programs and chart out the zip code and see how the distribution of people that have attended our programs. And it would be funny if, uh, for those of you who are, I know a few people are driving and listening to this presentation, which I, I'm getting a kick out of. When you're driving, you know, it would be fun if, if your dot was actually moving, but alas, that's, that's for the future world. And then we also can create different complicated charts here. So this chart actually takes all of the suggestions that people gave us in the surveys that you'll get, you always get a post event survey after work ready. And the last question is asking what event you're, what topic you're interested in learning about. And I actually take those and I, crunch that information, I put those into charts. And so this chart here is each of these different colors is different work ready sessions. And so I see the changes in what people are interested in based on what we do, so what you're interested in. And so, so I use Excel to create this chart, but Excel can do a whole lot more. It can do data manipulation. It can create pivot tables. Now pivot table takes a table of you know, reasonably large size or small size, and you can then manipulate the types of data that you see. So if you want to just know how one column interacts with another column, you can select those and the pivot table will then pivot and show you just how those different areas of your table interact. It's very cool and very interesting, particularly if you're using a lot of data and you, if you're chart or your if your table has a lot of lines and a lot of a lot of columns and a lot of information a pivot table really makes it much easier to 
get through to that information to find the answers that you need. So if you don't know about pivot tables and you're, you want to boost your Excel skills, go to LinkedIn Learning, which we offer for free from the library, and learn about pivot tables. I did it, I don't know, three or four or five years ago, and it changed the way that I used Excel. So that's Microsoft Excel, spreadsheet software, and there's alternatives too: Google Sheets, LibreOffice Calc, and there's definitely other spreadsheet software out there that you can look at. Now, Google Sheets and LibreOffice Calc are both free. So if you want to just get a taste of what Excel offers, I recommend downloading LibreOffice Calc um, because it is slightly more powerful than Google Sheets from you know, my use of it. I think it's a little bit closer to what Excel offers. And uh, yeah, try to use it, try to learn. And the good thing about Excel being around for so long, so, so long, is that anything that you're trying to do in Excel that you're not, you don't know how to do, you can just Google, you know, how do I change X, Y, Z in this column? Just Google exactly as, as you're thinking about the question and somebody will have asked that question in the same way. And there's going to be a tutorial about how to do it and it's going to be very helpful. I use Excel all the time and I still look things up very regularly on Google because it has so many options and I just don't know how to do everything on it, but always learning. Now, now that's spreadsheets and that's kind of the traditional view of spreadsheets. And now I want to show you a different app called Airtable. Airtable is an is a, is like a, a combination, a hybrid of spreadsheets and databases. The company was founded in 2012, so it's been around for just about 11 years, and it provides a smooth alternative to Excel. It's web-based, so you're pretty much doing it in, in the browser, or you can do it on your phone, although I hear the mobile app is not as good as the one in the browser. And it's less powerful overall than Excel, just because Excel can do so much. Airtable on the other hand, lets you display data in more flexible ways, um, which extends its use to project management. Now, Microsoft has a whole different app for that. Um, it's also more aesthetically pleasing than Excel, in my opinion. And I have here a video that will show you what Airtable does in just a short video, just a few minutes. Now, this video is six years old. Some of the things you see in this video may have changed. There's a newer one that was made two years ago, but I like this one better. So I want to show you this one. Let me know in the chat if you're able to see the, when I start the video, if you're, if you're able to see the sounds. I mean, if you're able to hear the sounds. Welcome to Airtable. With Airtable, you can organize anything. Oh, that stopped. Which, let's try it again. Projects, customers, ideas, you name it. It's as straightforward as a spreadsheet, but gives you the power of a database to work exactly how you want to work. Whether you're managing a successful record label, planning an upcoming move, or wrangling all of your team's deadlines for an upcoming rocket launch, it's easy to organize anything that you can imagine. It's not just numbers and text. With Airtable, you can add rich field types like checkboxes, drop downs, long notes, links to other tables, and even drag and drop file attachments, complete with document and image previews. You're not limited to only seeing things in a grid. You can group and organize your records, show them on a calendar, arrange them in a gallery, and embed them onto your website. You can even create and share a form, and the responses will feed directly into Airtable. Use Airtable on your own, or collaborate with a team to get things done. You can tag collaborators and message with them directly in the context of your information. And all your changes are securely saved and instantly synced across all devices and teammates, so you're always on the same page. Airtable. Organize anything you can imagine. So that's Airtable for you. And as you can see, it's really a mixture of Excel. It's a mixture of 
some of the project management or software, sorry, that we'll be using later, we'll be seeing later on in the presentation. And it seems like the learning curve is relatively low, or say the, the, the threshold for entries, relatively, they do have a free option. So you can go and you can test it out and play with it. And um, the free option can actually do a lot. So if you're just using it for personal use, um, the, it, the free tier is, is, is just right. Um, I once tried to use it for uh, to create my reading list, but then I realized uh, Airtable does too much for that. All I need is just to mark the books that I read is, is Google Sheets. So I switched over to Google Sheets, but I do intend to use Airtable at some point in the future. And I, I, if you are interested in the possibilities of combining Excel functionality with all those different views and forms and everything, then Airtable is a good option. So now let's move on to presentation software. And you know, some folks out there were specifically interested in learning about presentation software. And so today we're going to explode presentation software uh, just because this is an area that gets that is getting so much attention. Um, it's something that's that people use all the time. I and mean, this presentation is created in Microsoft PowerPoint, which is the one up here. So we're going to be talking about the kind of the basic level of presentations. So that's Microsoft PowerPoint and Canva. We're going to go a little bit deeper with Prezi, which expands the canvas of what you can do in presentations. Visme, which gives you much more than just presentation software. And Tome, which I just learned about recently, which uses chat, which actually, not, not chat GPT, it uses GPT-3 and DAL e for generating AI presentations. And we're going we're gonna to generate an AI presentation live for you today. So if you have a topic that you want me to just enter as a prompt into Tome, you know, post that in the chat or think about it. And I'll ask you to post it in the chat a little bit later. And then I'll just select one from the chat and plug how to get rid of squirrels from your yard or I don't know, you know, the best way to wash your car. If you want to create a presentation about those kind of things, I'll ask it to do it and we'll see what comes out. The results are sure to be, if not truly relevant, at least uh, something interesting for you to have experienced. Let's talk about the basics. Let's go to Microsoft PowerPoint and Canva. So what is presentation software? Let's get let's let's back up. Presentation software is software that lets you do presentations. So it, it's a it's a slideshow. You know, we used to put up transparencies. We used to have the you know slides that you moved around for images. So people came back from trips and then uh, they they had their the little slides that they would put in and use the projector to show you the presentation, the, their presentation. Um, used to write you people write on chalkboards and whiteboards. Those are all methods of presentation. Microsoft PowerPoint is a smooth way of doing that. And Microsoft PowerPoint and Canva both allow you to do that in a really relatively easy way, adding text to presentations, adding images, which is what what I have primarily here in my presentation is just text and images. You know, there's little different fonts and everything, but I have a background, I have text, I have images. And using that as a visual aid, you know, I can pass on information to the viewer. Now, even if you're not a designer, and I'm surely not a designer, there are a lot of pre-made themes and templates available in PowerPoint and Canva and all of the other software that we are seeing today. It's just standard now in presentation software. They have built-in themes. You can create your own too, of course, but the built-in ones are for the non-designers among us. Presentation software also lets you do animations and transitions. So animations are what happens on each individual slide. So if I had, for instance, these bullet points come up one after the other, that would be an example of animation. Or if I had them disappear, that would be an animation. A transition is something that happens between slides. And the nice thing about all these this presentation software that I'm going to be showing you is that it's really customizable. And particularly with these these basic ones here, 
PowerPoint and Canva, you can do a whole lot. You can make your presentations look like anything. You can change your slide size. You can make things bounce around. <clears throat> you can use 15 different fonts on your slides. And I say for better or worse, because boy, anybody who's been around an office for a long time has seen some ugly presentations. You let people, you know, you let people off the chain to create things. You let non-designers like us uh, off the chain to create presentations, and sometimes they don't turn out so well. And that's actually one I wanted to point out the difference between PowerPoint and Canva. I mean, we have the built-in templates, and they're they're okay, uh, but Canva. This is web-based. It's free software. I mean, they have a free, ver a pretty robust free version that a lot of people can use. Canva lets you create presentations that are just beautiful. Um, even if you're a non-designer, their built-in options, you know, they sort of guide you with the fonts they have to make presentations that are that look really, really nice. They look very professional. So whereas in PowerPoint, it's easy to create one, but it's probably not going to look amazing. With Canva, it's really easy to create one, and it's also amazing. So it's something to check out if you're interested in presentation software, but don't want something as wild as some of the other ones I'm going to show you. So let me give you an example of a slide transition, and then just show you what a PowerPoint window looks like. So you can see the smooth transition. And this is what this slide looked like when I had created, when I was creating it. So as you can see over here, this, this is the next slide, but it's not quite done yet. And this is the previous slide with the explosion. It's not, it's, it, it was, and then this, this slide right here, the one with the image of the, uh, the screenshot of the previous slide is gonna go right over, right over here. I, have, I hadn't created it yet. So I just took the image and then I created this slide. So we can see similarities to Microsoft Word. You know, we can see right here, we've got the ribbon. And this ribbon is in some ways similar to Microsoft Word. For instance, Microsoft Word. Now some of the other ones are totally different because of course you do different things in presentation software than you do with a word processor. You also have the outline view, so you can see all the different the different slides. And there's another way to actually see those. If I click, if I would click this one right here, this one down here. Sorry, it's I'm make a really little arrow, make a bigger arrow. This one down here, then it'll show me all the slides like in gallery mode, so I can see my whole presentation at a glance. And that's useful when you're practicing your presentation, and you want to just see what comes next. You want to move your slides around. It's really nice. And then of course we have speaker notes here, and uh, speaker notes are, you know, self-explanatory, useful for good reasons. Sometimes if you're just creating a presentation and you're not sure what you want to put on the slide, so you can put that those notes in the speaker notes and then use that later when you come back to the presentation to create it. Just create little outlines in the speaker notes. Or if you want to give handouts of your presentation, you can print out the speaker notes for the public as well. Now, I don't have any notes uh, for this slide because I know a lot about PowerPoint. I use it all the time. But for some of the slides, especially some of the slides with the presentation, with the software that I'm not as familiar with, I have notes for myself. And in fact, I'm using Presenter View right now, which is a really neat feature that PowerPoint has. And that is, so you are seeing just the single slide. On my end, I'm seeing the next slide that's, I have, a, I have a few boxes here. I see the next slide that's coming up. I have my notes. I have my the slide that you're seeing. And I also have features like annotation and laser pointer. You can see, do you, uh, you can see the laser pointer here. See, it's, it makes my mouse a little bit bigger. And highlighter. So if, you, if I want to highlight speaker notes, there we go. Get to highlight speaker notes. Um, it's just bring attention in different ways to what I'm doing, and I can just erase all of that as well. And so there's there's really a lot that is possible. You can even draw things with Excel itself on your own slides. Um, I recommend not using too many fancy stuff, and too much fancy stuff on uh, either PowerPoint or Canva, just because it, if you use a lot of fancy stuff, it gets kind of distracting for the public. So speaking of fancy stuff, I just recently learned about Visme. Um, this is uh, this is software that is web-based, and the difference between Visme and some of the others that we're showing is that it's really a full-featured 
platform. It not it's not only presentation software. It also create lets you create assets. I should say let's create different kind of stuff. It's really good with infographics. So if you have other stuff that you're interested in creating visually um, that has a similar theme to your presentation. So for instance, if you want to do a presentation, but you also want to give out certain handouts that have beautiful designs, you can do that. Or if you want to do a presentation, then have people uh, send out infographics after that looks just like your presentation. Visme is a good piece of software that lets you do that. I mean, it even has web tracking um, and least tracking. So when you post those things that you create, like the infographic, you, you can get feedback on how it's doing online. Now, this, just like a lot of the other ones, has a free version. The version, the free version is pretty limited. Some of the software that I'm showing you today, some of these apps have free versions that are really good. I mean, that you can just use the free version. Like I'm going to show you Todoist later. Todoist has a great free version. I just use the free version. I might pay for it just because I like it, but the free version is just fine. And Visme has a somewhat limited free version, but still good if you want to test it out, if you, see, you want to see if it's for you. I know that if I was a small business owner and I didn't have the funds to hire a designer for anything but, for instance, like the logo, um, I would use Visme to create all my visual materials just because it does everything within its platform. And I don't have to hire different people. I don't have to use a bunch of different software. I can just use that and get a unified view uh, visually. Now let's move on to a piece of software that does that it expands the presentation space. And I say expands because uh, Prezi, Prezi was founded in, in Hungary in I think it was like 2009. It's been around for a little while now, a long while now in internet years. Um, and what it did was it changed the way that we looked at presentations. So in a, when we we're in a room and we, we can have a whiteboard here and images here and various visual aids all around the room. And we our eyes will zoom around and we can create meaning. We can go up closer to something and we can see more detail if we want to see like a poster board with some more information. Well, Prezi used the computer space, the, your monitor, to also use movement and zoom to create that kind of effect. It's very interesting, though not, not ideal for people with motion sickness, maybe. But it's a very interesting piece of software, presentation software, because um, it, it does expand that canvas. It also has the, the usual things that I say. It has collaborative editing, but a lot of presentation software now has collaborative ed editing. That's more or less, particularly for web-based software, it's more or less a standard. It also has analytics tracking, just like Visme. And well, let me show you a video of what it looks like. And watch this. I, I really like this slide transition. So here's this video and let's get it going. Here's a look at how to organize your presentation in Prezi. All of our templates have a fully customizable structure ready for your content. Once you've selected a template from the library, you'll see topics ready for your content. Topics are like the main points of your presentation. Over here on the left, you'll see the order of your topics. If you see a range of numbers, it means there are subtopics as well. You can rearrange the order by clicking on a thumbnail and dragging it up or down. To extend your structure, click Add Topic. A planet topic type will be added by default. To add something else, select the arrow. From here, you can add a stack topic or even zoom animations. Let's go with the planet topic for now. Once the topic appears, select it to move it around anywhere you'd like. Now, let's take your audience a little deeper into one of these topics by adding subtopics. Try adding some content that is more detailed or further expands your main topic. If you need to, you can even add another you can subtopic. You can see how it's zooming, he's zooming in and zooming in and moving Try around. Try some topic types by adding a stack topic for now. Stack topics are similar to slides. Each page in a stack appears after the next. Stacks can be added to planets as subtopics, but planets cannot be added to stacks. Try to only add as many levels as you need. Adding too many levels of subtopics might make them lost in the details. To delete a topic or subtopic, simply select it and then delete on your keyboard. Quick tip, any animation you add to your presentation will also appear in the left sidebar. Just like topics, drag and drop animations up or down to reorder them in your presentation. And when you're ready, select present to see how it'll look. Now, you can go through each topic in order, 
or simply dive right into the topic that your audience wants to talk about and start the conversation from there. And there you have it. Take your content and make it shine with Prezi. So you can see it kind of, you kind of are able to go, go all over the place with Prezi. And Prezi does also have a free version, so you can test it out. It became really popular among teachers, and I can see why, you know, the, the presentation goes all over the place. It's it's a lot of fun, and if, you, if you're if you of a creative artistic bent, you can create your own, uh, you can create your own different planets and levels. The, Prezi has its own language. All this software, they each each piece of software has its own little language. And so you can create different things. I've never actually used Prezi because PowerPoint does what I need it to do. But every time I see it, I, I, I think, man, I really want to try this out because, because it looks so interesting and fun, the, the different ways to visually see how topics relate. So really, the sky is the limit with Prezi. Okay, so this is Prezi. And now I want to take you to Tome. Yeah, Tome is... It's relatively new. It's not. It's not very. It wasn't founded this year, but it's relatively new. And you know, we all hear this talk about artificial intelligence. Some of you out there may have tried out Chat GPT. Some of you have. If you search Bing frequently, you may have known that Chat GPT was brought into Bing. And what Chat GPT is, in case you don't know, is it's a. It's a chatbot. It's an AI powered chatbot. So you can talk to it and it'll give you answers to questions in natural language. So if you ask it, for instance, um, can you tell me about presentation software? It'll say presentation software is, I mean, it'll type it out. A presentation software is a type of software that does X, Y, and Z. Here's some examples of presentation software. It often has these features. It'll actually do that for you. So it's like it goes beyond what a search engine is, which uh, you know, search engine just brings you back websites. A chatbot like ChatGPT actually considers the context of different information, then predicts the next the words in the next answer that are most statistically probable. It's very interesting and free to try. So if you want to try out ChatGPT, you can actually. Just type that into Google and it'll take you to the OpenAI website. OpenAI is the company that makes ChatGPT and you can try it out for free. It's really, there's nothing to it, but it's a lot of fun. I've, I've, I've been playing with it. So companies like Tome have taken the engine underneath ChatGPT, which is GPT-3 or GPT-3.5 technically, um, and are using it within a stack to then build new things. So they're also using Doll E2, uh, which is uh, Doll E2 is uh, a AI image generator. So this image right here in this slide was actually created by Doll E2 in a presentation that I had tested out about productivity software. So I asked to give me the presentation that I'm showing you right now. I didn't use it because it didn't end up being very good, but I just wanted to show you this kind of, so Dolly 2 creates images from prompts, as does GPT-3. GPT-3 creates text from prompts. And so you can create a whole presentation from just giving it a simple prompt. So if you have a prompt that you want me to give Tome, put it in the chat right now. Um, anything, just any random thing that you want a presentation about, I'm going to put that into Tome and we're going to see how it works. So the nice thing about Tome in terms of its aesthetics as a presentation maker, because it's really, it, it's presentation software that's kind of powered by AI. You can actually just create your own presentations with it. Um, you don't have to use the AI. But I think the AI is like the, the, what makes Tome special. So let me bring up the Tome website and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to go ahead and and I'm going to go ahead and look at the chat and see what see what different see what you guys are interested in me me giving to um, giving to the software. I see organize a to do list, owls pitching a movie, fundraising presentation with golden retrievers. Now you got to have the dogs. So I feel like maybe I would golden. But what about golden retrievers? Like what do we want to what do we want to know about them? Because if I just put in presentation, but it'll just give me pictures of golden retrievers, which is great. But let's say, like, what about them? How to train a golden retriever, maybe? Let me go ahead. Let me bring. Let me bring up my screen with the Tome, the Tome website. I've, I knew I was going to do this, so I'm gonna. I have the, my browser with Tome. I just have to find it. Where's my browser? 
I'm looking for different uh, windows to share. It's, it's not giving me the right share window, so I'm gonna, I need to close something here. Common health issues of golden retrievers. How to train golden retriever, the golden retriever. Can I close up? I, have, I, have, I think I have too many windows open and Zoom is like, I can't, I, I'm, I, I can't see your browser. I'm, I can't give it to you to share. So I'm gonna, I need to close a few windows before I am able to share it. This is like the, my version of technical difficulties. Although I'd say of technical difficulties, this one isn't that difficult. All right, so I'm gonna share screen now. I'm gonna see if I can, here it is, Google Chrome. There he goes. Okay, so this is Tome. Um, let me give you the Tome. I'm gonna just go to the Tome website, the, the first, the main website here. I don't know if it's gonna log me in automatically. I don't know, it, it gives, it goes for, to me, it adds, Oleg's Life Shop is a, as the account I create. It's using a Google account to create a free account. And so you get a certain amount of credits within Tome. And so I, down here, you get a certain amount of credits and that's uh, AI credits. That's how much, because AI uses, uh, it uses uh, basically computer cycles. It uses the computer's brain and that costs money. So it, you can, you get, I think 500 free credits. And if you refer people, you get more free credits um, to use. Um, so we've got, I, I have still have plenty of, I have 470 credits. So I have enough to show you. Okay, so how do you create a presentation? It's with this app, it's actually really, really simple. So you just go to create and it opens up this window and their aesthetic here is really minimal. So you're not gonna, they're, they're, you're not gonna get a whole lot happening, a million transitions, all those things you can do on Excel and Canva and Prezi, that's not here. Here, we're simple, text images. You can arrange them in slightly different ways. So now I'm gonna go to, uh, so uh, somebody asked in the chat, is, uh, is Tome free software? So Tome is free. You can pay for it. I mean, I'm sure there are upgrade versions. If you want more credits, um, you, you have to pay for that. But um, it is free. Um, I'm using, I, I have not paid for it. Um, what I'm doing right now is, is free. So for a limited amount, it's free. And I think most of the things you can do in it for now are free. So let me go into the chat and see. So we got, so I'm going to try to do, you know what? Somebody mentioned common health issues of golden retrievers. I'm curious about that one. I like the training one, but I want, I think common health issues is a little bit different. So it's a create a presentation about, and you just type in the prompt here. And I'm going to type in common health issues of golden retrievers. And I'm going to see what it says here. So presentation, outline story. So we want a presentation. And images. So we can try to choose a different art style. So Let's do for golden retrievers. How about neo impressionist? Why not? Actually, you know what? Let's do cyberpunk because no, epic. Because dogs are epic. Okay, so we've got this. And I'm just going to press enter. And here we go. Unveiling the health risks of golden retrievers. So that is do. It's just creating the presentation right now. It's using the software, the AI, to then generate. You know what an what a presentation on golden retrievers, the health risks of golden retrievers would look like. And then it's so it's bringing up. It's creating an outline by itself. And then as it's creating each slide, it's using that as a prompt to generate the images. So we can see over on the left hand side here. You can see that it's already created a few slides and it's already generated a few images. And so we see gastrointestinal issues. It's, it's writing some stuff here. So it's writing a few paragraphs for each slide. It's probably going to do about 10 slides. I don't, this, I'm sure there's a way to, to tell. So yeah, I did eight slides. Okay, so let's take a look at our presentation. So let's go to here. So unveiling the health risks of, actually, let's do play. Let's just hit player so it's, we get rid of the thing on the side. So unveiling the health risks of golden retrievers. Here we give you an outline slide, skin conditions, eye conditions, ear infections, gastrointestinal issues, joint conditions, and cancer. We don't want to get any of those things, and we don't want our dogs to get any of those things. So here is the epic image of a golden retriever. I'm not sure how epic it is, but it is a golden retriever, I think. So here's some skin conditions. So you can see the what it writes here is relatively general, um, but then you, you get some developing seborrhea uh, condition. So when you generate these kind of things, 
um, it's going to create something for you that has a semblance of, oh, this one is epic, this image. I like this image. Um, it, it, it creates uh, the illusion of knowing what it's talking about, but it's a computer. It doesn't know what it's talking about. It knows kind of generally what it's talking about. So you always have to read through this and see if the facts are actually factual. But, I mean, just from nothing to create this presentation, it's pretty impressive. So these images, of course, have nothing to do with the, these are just images of golden retrievers. Um, it has nothing to do with gastrointestinal issues. Joint conditions, I like these. Some of these, some of these pictures actually turned out pretty well. And this is the last one. So here we would create another slide. We would create a concluding slide, you know, that sort of thing. But you can't, so, so here's a great question. So what are you, it's like cheat codes for PowerPoint. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know what, I'm sure Microsoft is going to start including AI assistance in its app before long. You know, what Tome is doing now is, is gonna be an, a normal thing. And then we get another, can you edit the Tome presentation afterwards? So that's, here's the thing. Yes, you can, you can do anything you want to it. Um, so I'm gonna go back, to, I'm gonna exit the sharing screen and go back to our thing. And so the great thing here is um, that you can edit any part of it. So let's say I don't like this. I don't like this title, unveiling the health risk. If it doesn't make any sense, unveiling. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. So I can change it myself. So I can do, you know, exhibiting or demonstrating. Um, but we can also let AI help us. We can do AI edit. So we drop down, we can adjust tone. Adjust tone, friendly, excited, persuade, intellectual, reduce, make it shorter, make it like I want to make it a little shorter. So it's rewriting risks of owning a golden retriever. So it's now it's not really what I want though. I want, I'm going to try health issues of golden retrievers. And then maybe we're going to make this more intellectual. Oh, okay, pathology of Canis lupin familiaris of the golden retriever brand breed. Okay, well, so there's options. And then here we can have it rewrite these. We can, for instance, have it rewrite this whole thing. Um, we can change the image. So we can download the image too. So we can change the image. I forget how to, how to change the, oh, so we can make the image bigger. I mean, there's, I know there's a way to change the image. I just don't remember how to do it. So I just select it so I can make it smaller, bigger. Um, I know there's a different, there's a way to change the image, but I think what we can do is we can actually just remove the image. So I just hit delete. I did delete it, and then I can add another part of it. So I can add here, so add tile. And there's options. So the image is probably one that I, I would have to bring up. Yes, yeah, so I have to upload it. But if I want Dali to create it for me, so I'm going to remove this again. I'm going to create a new tile and do Dolly, and it's gonna ask me for a prompt. And so here I want, uh, well, I don't want, I don't want an image of skin conditions. So uh, let's say, let's say, uh, let's see what it does. Golden Retriever getting a haircut, just for fun. Maybe being groomed, let's, let's say that. So there's actually, there's, a, there's really an art to creating these prompts that gets you what you want. I'm, I'm just getting started at it so but there's whole websites that will teach you how to create prompts for ai that will get you what you want so let's try this so it's going to give me a few different options here and then we're going to move on because we're we've been we've been in tome for quite a while and it's it's software that maybe you're not going to use right away maybe it's not quite ready yet but i really wanted to show it to you so okay so here we go oh look this is nice there we go there. I oh, hear the dog really likes it. Yeah, the dog is enjoying that. Okay, good. So this is this is our skin condition slide. So that's Tome. It's it's fun to look at. I hope I hope it was okay that I shared it with you. Um, AI is in the news, so I, I I thought to include this, even though it's it may not be the thing you're going to be using right away. Um, you can also change, of course, the the way the slide looks, but you really only have these options here. So you can change the change the slides to have a kind of a different color. You can change the page color. So if I want it to be green like this, I can do this or yellow. This is hard to see. So maybe, maybe I'll just make it red like this. I can change the font. 
So if I want the, the headings to be a serif font, and if I want this to be white, I can change that. So I can change the way all that looks. I can save the theme. I can change the color of the fonts. I can do auto color so that it, it'll decide which colors are best to use. So you can, you know, you can make changes. I can make changes specifically just to this page. Um, so it's like it calls slides pages and these different parts of it are called tiles within uh, Tome. So I can do so you can also change some stuff, but this is, this is fun. So let me stop sharing that and I'll bring up my presentation again. So this presentation, oh, I'm, I'm going a little bit over. I thought it was going to be this. I was going to be talking for about an hour. I have, I have so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for another about 10 minutes on pro project management and then we're going to do a Q&A. Um, so I hope that hope that's OK. I think I got a little bit sidetracked with Tome. So let's get our presentation back up. And of course, if you need to leave, you can leave for, for any reason. This is going to be recorded so you can watch it again later. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And here we're back at back at home with home. OK, so let's move forward. So now let's move from personal organization to project management. So I have a few different apps. I'm not going to show you all what all of these do. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because Frankly, personal organization or personal knowledge management and project management apps are so deep that you can really do an hour on just any one of these. So what I have here is the logo for Joplin, Notion, and Evernote. Somebody mentioned Evernote. Evernote has been a player in this game for quite a while and is, is very popular. And then on this side, I have Trello, Asana, and Taiga. Now, you don't have to remember those. Um, I'll, their, their names are on future slides. Um, the difference between personal organization and project management for our purposes here is that personal organization is really something that one or two people maybe use. You do it for yourself. Whereas project management is typically something that you'll use with teams, small or large, uh, even in whole organizations to manage large, long-term projects. And each of these apps have strengths that it has that, um, that that I'll, I'll be talking a little bit about. So let's get into personal organization. So what do you use personal knowledge management apps for? You might use them for note-taking, for planning or scheduling. Um, you might use them for storing documents. Uh, now, each of these has their own structure and language, but most personal knowledge man management software, and all three of these do, ha typically has a sidebar with notes, and each note is sometimes has a notes, and it's, the notes are sometimes put into folders and some kind of outline view. And each of those notes then has text. You can usually embed images. You can do things like that with personal knowledge management software. It, it lets you. Oftentimes, they have tagging as well, so it creates. It's like a second brain. I, the idea is a second brain. Sometimes the notes will interlink, which is great and useful if you're trying to create something. And you can do a lot of different things with personal knowledge management software in the sense that you can, you can really create your own organizational system, or you can use ones that already exist, like uh, David Allen's Getting Things Done, uh, GTD, a very popular organizational system. And a lot of these apps have templates for GTD. Um, I used, for instance, Zettler, which is, which is one of the ones that, down here. Uh, I use Zettler to write a book chapter relatively recently. It got published at the end of last year. And what I did was I created notes for different uh, citations. So I would take notes from something I was reading, and then I would, in another note, I write chunks of text. And then later, I was able to arrange all those notes and those chunks of text into a whole chapter. And so depending on the software that you're using, you might be able to move things around like that, or you might just use notes and interlink between the notes so you know which ones connect to each other. Uh, right now, my daily driver, I use Simple Note. I use OneNote, Microsoft OneNote for work every day. It's always open. But I only use Microsoft OneNote for Windows 10 because the other versions of OneNote I can't, I can't, I can't use. I, they're, they're, they're not as user-friendly user for me. And then I use Simple Note because it's really, really, really simple. All it is is sidebar with your notes and then just text in the notes. So as, as you can see, I, I love Microsoft Notepad. and I like the simple text-based uh, Simple Note, which is also completely free, by the way. 
as is Zettler, as is Logsec, um, Roman Obsidian, I think you have to pay for. All right, so that's personal knowledge man management software. And I'll show you a short, short video of Notion, which just like Airtable, takes the idea of what it is. So it's like Airtable is kind of a spreadsheet database hybrid. Notion is a personal knowledge management project management hybrid. So it really combines the two. So you can use it by yourself or you can use it with teams because Notion is really, really customizable. And that's a good thing and a bad thing because if you wanna use it, you have to, you can use their, their templates but you really have to adjust them a little bit. And if you don't wanna do that, if you want something that's already built in, then you might rather use Evernote or Joplin. But if you like to tinker and you like to build your own system, Notion is it. I'm going to show you a little video about Notion. We all crave clarity and organization. We want a quiet space to think. And we want all the information we need to be there when we need it. Notion gives you both. Whether you're working on your own or on a team of thousands, Notion provides a single space to organize everything that matters. One space to capture your thoughts, manage your projects, or even run an entire company. Every team can have their own home base. Notion is a single home for all your need to knows and need to do's, displayed any way you need to see them. Notion gives you a clean, open surface where you can think, write, and plan. Just start typing. It's that simple. Or add any other type of content you like. Images and videos. And much more. Design pages exactly the way you want them. And when you change your mind, rearrange them with a simple drag and drop. Everything in Notion can be customized to grow and change with you. Create as many pages as you need. Pages focused on today. Pages plotting your path to tomorrow. Nest pages within pages within pages so that everything has its place. And you have clear pathways to everything. Find anything with a few clicks. Whether it's your team wiki, product roadmap, meeting notes, or personal tasks. When you use Notion with your team, you share a workspace so that everyone has the same source of truth. Collaborate on the same page at the same time. Or work asynchronously across time zones. And pick up right where your teammates in London or Seoul left off yesterday without missing a thing. And it goes far beyond documents. Create databases to manage team-wide projects, track deals, onboard new employees, publish to the web. Everything you see can be modified to fit you and your team. In a world of too much information scattered across too many tools, sending too many notifications, Notion offers something new, a calm, clear place to focus on the things that actually matter to you. And that's Notion. So Notion is one of the apps that has that really nice free version that you can just use without ever having to pay for it. And it's the free version is nearly unlimited. So I would recommend trying it if you're interested in this kind of customizable environment. The only thing that's not customizable in Notion is how it shows up in your browser. And there was a big space between the sidebar and the page area that I didn't like. And so I used Notion for a while and then I said, oh, I can't, I don't like the way this looks. Also their, their mobile app is not the best. And I really needed something that I can use on mobile and on the, in the browser with the same kind of elegance. And Notion doesn't have that quite yet, or at least it didn't when I used it a couple of years ago. So that said, I recommend trying Notion if the, if the video or if the idea of this kind of personal knowledge management software is of interest to you. Now, many people use personal knowledge man management software for personal development, they use it to plan events with partners or friends. So it's really good if you want, if you're planning like a wedding or some kind of big event with one or two more people, one or two other people, you can you can put a lot of different kind of stuff in there. Um, or if, you, uh, if you're just brainstorming and a lot more. So personal management software, it can do a lot and it's really good and useful.
But let's move on to project management tools. Now, project management tools, because project management can be so complex, they also tend to be very complex. And that's why I'm not going to get deep into it because you could really spend hours just going over any of these pieces of software. But here are some of the kind of things that you might do with project management tools. Something basic like text ma task, task management, like a to-do list for people. You know, project planning where you're going to create like a Gantt chart, which I'll show you on the next slide. Budgeting, invoicing, um, time track and reporting, analytics, all kinds of things. You'll be able to see dashboards. Um, and the, just like all of the other apps, there's many, many options for project management, depending on how complex and simple you need it. So what I have here is Trello. Trello primarily uses Kanban boards, which is blocks that you can change to visually plan a project. Um, it focuses on Kanban boards and doesn't have all of the other sort of crazy options that a lot of project management tools have. Asana, on the other hand, is a lot more fully featured. It has a lot of the things that are listed on this slide. And Taiga is free and open source software, so you can use it for free, download it for free, play with it for free. I mean, you never have to pay the company that makes it, unless you want to. Um, Taiga has a lot of these features, but it's focused on software development. So it has a lot of uh, applications. It has a lot of uh, affordances for that's agile oriented. So the agile kind of the agile scrum system. Um, and that has that has all of the kind of its own nomenclature and everything. And so Taiga is really like that. But I, if, you, if you're interested, Trello and Asana and Taiga all have free versions. Taiga is always free. Trello and Asana limit what the free version does. I've used Asana before for my own project management actually at work. And it has, it, it served me well. I didn't use all of these crazy features. When I say crazy, I mean, it was crazy for me. I didn't need all these features. But what I did use it for, it actually worked out really well. So I, I switched over to Microsoft OneNote because it was closer to my computer. And I didn't, I, I preferred something that wasn't web-based for that. But um, Asana was was useful for collaborating. So here's some of, the, some of the kind of visual aids you might see in project management software. What we have here is a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart is used for scheduling projects in the long term. So you can see different parts of the project take a certain amount of time. And then eventually the project goes towards completion. Um, you can also have project management tools all have calendars that you can arrange and rearrange. They all have, they all have status dashboards. So you can see where everybody is in the project. Um, some project management tools, particularly the more complicated ones, will create swim lane diagrams for you, which is a diagram. It's a visual representation of a process with specific icons that will tell you who does is who's responsible for what. Um, the, the apps that I had on the previous slide, these don't do swim lane diagrams, but I included some like Microsoft Visio, um, YED, and Diagrams.net, which do create swim line diagrams. And YED creates other kind of diagrams as well. And it's also free software, so you can use it without any limitations. So that's project management software. And we're getting towards the end here. I just wanted to let you know about a few other apps, just really quickly tell you what they do and things you might want to try out. So what we have here is Tableau. Tableau is an industry standard for data visualization and dashboards. It's a really powerful app, app and a long standing with a long standing and very active user community. And there's a free version so you can try it out and you can learn from the many, many tutorials that are out there and people who are interested in getting you to use it and trying it and showing off uh, what it can do. Um, you can also sign up for the Tableau Viz of the day, like visualization of the day. I'm signed up for it. I get an email every day from Tableau with an example of what you can do with it. Even though I've never actually used it myself, I get a kick out of the options and I keep thinking I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, but I just haven't yet. Slack is a standard for, uh, it's a popular uh, rich chat app. So, you know, there's chat like text messages, which is just text and maybe images and, and emojis. Slack on the other hand is chat between one-to-one -one with groups in different channels. So there's like chat rooms kind of, and you can embed videos, sounds, all kinds of multimedia, but the chat Slack is communication software for 
uh, many companies in groups use it. So uh, it's something that's good to know about. And at the very least, watch a video, go to the website, just kind of see what it does. And then finally, Todoist. Todoist is my favorite to-do list app. It's an organizer, but it does a lot more. So it's not as customizable as Notion, but as beautiful and as functional. They have a very good um, they have a very good mobile app. And also the free version of Todoist is it's great. Now Todoist is a at the company, Doist also creates Twist, which is a a communication app just like Slack. So, you know, Slack, Twist, Todoist, Tableau, so many apps. Now, you probably already know, but in case you don't, there are companies, big companies primarily like Microsoft, Zoho, Nextcloud, Google, that have whole suites of apps <laughs> that include all of the different functionality that I've talked about in the different apps. So we've got, you know, Google with Google Workspace that has a chat, spreadsheet, presentation software, you know, project management, all that kind of stuff. Um, all in one, probably, I know Microsoft, Google, Microsoft, both of those, they have dozens of different apps that do the kind of functionality that, that all of the apps in this presentation do, you know, for better, for some of them are good, some of them are not as good, but they're all there within one. Um, so they, they will, uh, they seek to keep you within their bubble, but really it's worthwhile to test and try out all the different things that are out there. And if you're interested in learning more, of course, you can look up these different pieces of software. Some of them are available as books in our catalog. Just don't get a book that's too old because the these the software changes on a relatively regular basis. So make sure that the book you get is for the version of the software that you have. However, there's also other ways to learn. We have free online learning available for you. Uh, LinkedIn Learning. Gale Courses, Learning Express, BrainFuse Job Now, great for job seekers. Um, LinkedIn Learning Gale Courses are wonderful, great teachers. And you can learn about a lot of the software. You can learn much, much more than that, all free with your library card. Just go to lacounty.library.org backslash learn. And you go to LinkedIn Learning, just type in the name of the software. It might actually be there. Um, a lot of them are, particularly the Microsoft software. I've used LinkedIn Learning to up my Excel skills quite a lot, and it was very worthwhile. If you have questions about any research topic, you can always call a librarian um, at your local library location, Monday through Friday, or nine to six, or whenever they're open. You can text the library, 626-394-4019, Monday through Friday, 12 to six. I've got people watching those and we'll respond to you. You can email the library at lacounty.library.org backslash contact us. There's a form and then you get a response or you can chat with a librarian. Same page at the, um, called Instant Library Monday through Friday 12 to 6. If you want to chat within your browser with a librarian, you can also do that. And now we've reached the end of our presentation and now thank you for sticking around and I'm really ready to take your questions. Okay. So let me see. So Mitchell, we're going to receive a link for the recording. Yes, you will receive a link for the recording. I mentioned a couple of times you're going to receive a link to this entire presentation and the slides um, either late this week or early next week. And the, the presentation is going to be on YouTube. So if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, you'll get all the notifications for whenever we post videos of any of our events or other informative videos. And we post videos relatively frequently on our YouTube channel. So if you're interested in the events but can't attend all the events, which is understandable because we have a lot of them, um, you, can always, you can watch them on our YouTube channel. Okay, so let me get to the Q&A here. Uh, I noticed there are a lot of special characters in Google meeting invites. When I open the meeting on iPhone, making reading super challenging, but this won't be the case when I open the meeting on laptop. Is there an easy way to get rid of those annoying special characters? That's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that. If you want to email me, if you just respond to the follow-up email, if you can send me a screenshot of what those special characters look like, I might be able to give you a better answer since I don't use Google meeting that often. I don't use 
an iPhone. But if you show it to me, then I might be able to kind of discern how to fix that. But yeah, just, just send me an email and I'll try to help. There are a lot of uh, ways to access Notepad. How do you quickly access it when you need it? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I push, uh, so I'm on a Windows laptop. I push the Windows button and R, and that's so a Windows R, and that opens up the little run tab, and I just type in Notepad. So I can I can open up Notepad within like I mean just now I just opened it while I was talking. I have it open on my screen now. So that's how I access. I keyboard shortcuts are your friend when you want to access things quickly. So I just type in I hold the Windows key, press R. It opens up the little run tab on the bottom of my screen. I type in Notepad and it opens. If I make a presentation graph or information sheet and want to share with others, do they need to have the program downloaded? So it depends on the program. Most programs will let you share with other people, especially web-based programs. That's how they get people interested in the program, but also they know with particular presentation software that these things are meant to be shared. So they, they will let you share. Um, so I mentioned is Tome free? Um, yeah, we had that question before. Tome is free, uh, but for a limited amount of uh, AI credits. So that you have 500 credits and then you can also, uh, you can buy more. Which of the personal apps do you think is the most consistent computer to mobile? Well, we've talked about a lot. Um, I think Todoist is really, it, they have great mobile experience and a great uh, computer experience. Um, Generally speaking, uh, for basic use, I like the I like the Google, the way the Google apps translate over. The functionality is limited, but they work very well. So Google Sheets, Google um, Google Docs, Google. I don't know if Google. I don't know if Google uh, the presentation software uh, works that well on the phone. I've never actually used it on the phone, but I know that I use Google Sheets fairly regularly on my phone. It actually works pretty pretty well. Um, so there's, and we have to go through each piece of software um, and the ones that I've used, I can tell you. I know that uh, Microsoft OneNote is okay on the phone. Um, it, I've had problems with syncing with it. So that's, that's the main problem. So I use it, every, I use it every day on my computer, but if I want to use it on my phone, it doesn't always have the latest thing and it takes a while to sync it. Somebody doesn't sync everything. So that's, that's problematic for me and as a kind of a power user of it. Simple note is really great. I mean, that's my, I use it all the time. So I use it on the computer, on the phone. It looks almost the same and it works really well on both, but it's also very, the functionality is very simple. So it's easy to translate to the phone. When something, with something like Notion where the, it has the function, it has so much functionality and some of those project management software where they just do so much, translating it to the phone it, with a tiny screen is really, it, it's challenging. So they have to decide what they want to translate and sometimes they make choices that aren't the choices that you would make. And that's that's a problem, but it's one that's really, really difficult to solve, unfortunately. Do you think you'll ever do a presentation on learning disabilities in the workplace, managing, coping, overcoming assistive tech, know your rights? Possibly. Yeah, put it in the put it in the put it in the post event survey. The more people that put that, the more the more likely we are to do it. But yeah, I think that's a great topic. And I'll definitely keep it in my notes for the future. Um, so if you still have questions, put them in the Q&A. I know I have a few more in the chat. Um, we've got what's the what's the YouTube? Oh, what's our YouTube channel? Oh, let me post. Let me post a link to it. The YouTube channel, the most basically is youtube.com backslash LA County Library. Um, so we can just type that in youtube.com backslash LA County Library. So all of our social media channels are LA, at LA County Library. So it's the same thing with YouTube. YouTube.com backslash LA County Library and you can see all the videos we post. And if you just want specifically the work and career, go to playlist and the work and career playlist has um, has all of those. So that's where all, all the videos, programs like this get, post, get posted. What is the best option similar to constant contact for client management and communication? That's a great question. There are a few good pieces of software out there. But I don't know what the best one is because I haven't really tested it out. It really it depends on what your needs are. Some of them are good for bigger companies. Some of them are okay for smaller companies. Um, they all have various pricing and various limitations based on those pricing tiers. So it depends on what kind of emails you send out, how many of them you send out, um, if the interface is something that's that's good for you. 
those are all things to look at. Thankfully, a lot of them have a free trials, so you can go in there and just look around and see if you see if you like it. And then some of them also have videos on YouTube that demonstrate you know, how they work. So somebody will do like a tour of you know constant contact, and you can you can look at that. That'll help you make a more informed decision. Just make sure that on YouTube you watch the video that's newer because the, the software changes or the, the web pages change, and something that was the way it was five years ago, it may not look at all like it does now. Oh, something, sorry, what did you say about the playlist to watch those videos? So within our YouTube channel, there's a playlist for work and career, and that's where all of our work ready videos go. So if you just want to know about these work ready videos, um, there they'll be in our playlist. What is a good registration website? What do you mean by register? Do you mean like forms? Um, I know, I mean, Google has Google forms. The Wufu forms are good. Um, a lot of people use SurveyMonkey. Uh, the, as, as you saw, Airtable has forms. Um, there's there's quite a few, and depending also depending on what you need, um, those, those would also be good. But I'm not exactly sure what you mean by registration. I think, yeah. So I think, I think that was the answer. Yeah, there's, there's, I think it's like something like type form or jot form or something that has, is kind of a little bit more flashy and is easy to create, but I forget what the name is exactly. So I'm going to post the link to the directly to the to our working career playlist, so you can see, so you can see exactly what that looks like. Tome is free. Yes, Tome is free. We have another question of whether Tome is free. It's free free for a limited amount, for a limited amount of AI thought processes. Okay. Well, I don't have any questions in the chat or the Q&A at the moment. I hope that everybody got a little something to think about and excited about trying something new. Do join us at the beginning of March for Work Ready Returning to Work. That's going to be, again, on March 7th at 11 o'clock. I'm gonna post a link to that chat one more time. So in case you weren't here at the beginning, you know what we, having, we have coming up for work ready. You can sign up for that. And then starting in March, we're gonna have classes every week um, on Tuesday. So if you like these kind of classes, if you're interested in work-related materials, if you know somebody who would benefit from them, um, we're going to be doing everything from the basics to more complicated topics to how to apply uh, to jobs on websites, government jobs. We've got a lot of stuff planned for you. So if you know somebody who's interested, if you're interested, go ahead and register for those classes. Even if you can't make it, we will send you the video. So you'll be able to watch, enjoy, learn from it. And with that, um, I'm going to post a link to the post event survey that should also open up when you close this presentation. But if you want to start on it earlier, here's the post event survey. Um, you can fill that out, give us your honest opinion. It's very short, but very helpful for us. And once again, many thanks for your attention, many thanks for your questions, and I'll see you next time.